In this video, we're going to be having a close and detailed look at the new multi-painting feature, which is now available in PBR Painter 3. So this is a real highlight of this version because basically this is just something you really can't do in Blender at the moment. Multi-painting is basically the ability to projection paint multiple different channels simultaneously. And as I'll show in this video, that means that we can do all sorts of cool things. So we can projection paint decals, which have multiple channels. And we can also use this feature to paint over the seams, which is often a problem when we're using UV mapping and PBR textures. So I'm going to make a start now and to get started the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer because multi-painting is going to be accessed through a particular layer type. When you go to add a new layer you can now add a multi-paint layer and this is the only place where you can do multi-painting at the moment and multi-painting is the only thing you can do with this layer. So nice and intuitive, very straightforward, every time you want to do multi-painting you add a multi-painting layer. So I'm going to turn on auto refresh. Now when you add this layer it looks something like this so you can see the little icon here indicating you've got that multi-paint layer and it's also going to give you the key binding to do that multi-painting which is going to happen obviously when you're in texture paint mode. There's a few different ways to set up this layer. The way that you will set it up probably 99% of the time is with the multi-import tool but I'm not going to go through that first because I want to explain just exactly how this layer is set up and exactly how that painting is happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on one channel, the color, and what you'll notice is for a start it gets set to texture and this is the type that's going to be needed to do that multi-painting. So you can change that to constant as well and I'm going to talk about that a bit later but for now we're going to leave it as texture and what you'll notice is there's two different images in here. So the target image is basically what you're going to be painting onto so you're going to be painting from some PBR texture and it's going to project onto this target image. So you can add a new image, you can import an image into there. The brush image is the image that is then being projected onto that target image. So this is going to be your PBR texture that's going to come with a set of other textures like the base, uh, sorry, the roughness or the normals or the metallic and they're collectively going to be painting onto these target images. So again you can open these manually if you want. So you could go through and set up all your channels and load them all in like that but generally what you'll do and what I recommend is click this multi-import, which is basically the same as the multi-import that you've been used to with a standard layer. However, when you do this for a multi-paint layer, you'll be asked whether you want to create a target image. So this is this set of images in here, and then you need to specify the resolution. So this is the resolution that you're going to be painting onto. So I'm going to start with something like 2K for now. Click OK, and I get this window in here, and from here I need to choose whatever the material is or the set of textures that I'm going to use for painting. You'll notice you can also change these settings in here as well. So I'm just going to pick one of these and what I'm going to do is now I'm going to select all of the different images that I want to paint on. And then clicking import. Okay so lots of things will happen when you do that with a multi-paint layer. So number one you'll notice that I now have my brush set up and I now have the base color image ready to be projected onto the target image. Before I do any painting I'll just go through and have a look at these channels. So as you can see it's now created these empty images which are ready to be painted onto. That's because we selected this option in here. So these are all this resolution. It's also loaded in these brush images and there's one for every single channel. So this means that our multi-painting is ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is actually show that painting. So I'm going to jump over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up however I want and you don't have to do this. You can set up your mapping as something else so you can do random if you want but by default it's going to go to this stencil and then we're going to use this key binding control shift and then we're going to left click and then we're going to do the painting just like that. And what you'll notice is what basically happens is that when you're painting it is only painting on the base color and then when you let go of your mouse it goes back and it actually adds the other channels in afterwards. And this is in order to make this run nice and smoothly within the limitations of Blender's texture painting system. Otherwise it's very difficult to make this run nicely and what it does is it puts all of that loading time where it's painting all those other channels after you let go of the mouse as opposed to while you're trying to do your painting. And I think this is a much nicer way to do it because it means that you get more control of exactly where you're painting your images. So again if we just have another look we can go over here we can just bring this like this and paint again control shift left click and then we can paint over the image like this 
And then what you'll see is that it adds all those other channels afterwards. So we can have a look if we change this view to view mode to single channel, we can see that we have the base color painted. We have the roughness painted at the same spot, the normals, the height, and whatever else that was set up would be painted as well. You also notice that there's in here, there's the color correction tab, and you can see that it's also painting on the ambient occlusion. So that's also being applied in there. And you can see that if we change this strength. And that's basically it. So that is as simple as it is. So I know I took some time to explain it, but if you actually think about what we did, all we did was add a multi paint layer, click your multi import, everything's set up and you can paint. Okay, so this is the basics covered. I'm gonna showcase another couple of examples. Before I do that, I just want to point out one more thing, and that is this primary channel drop down here. What this does is it specifies which channel you actually want to be painting on first. So by default, it goes to the base color like this, but you can change that to another channel if you want to. So for example, we can go to normal. And what you'll notice is that now we're painting on the normals first, and then it's going to go back and actually update those other channels. So I'm going to change this back to material view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, and now I'm going to paint on the normals. So again, we see that we first painted on those, those normals and then it went back and it, it added the color, the roughness and the height. So it's the same thing, you're just starting with a different channel. So as you can see, as I'm painting, it's really painting those normals in. And then when we let go, it's going to calculate those other channels and then it's gonna apply that like that. Okay, so as I said, I'm gonna showcase two more things using this setup. So to do that, I'm gonna delete this layer and start again. And the first thing I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to add a multi-paint layer, and I'm going to click Import. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a decal. So these decals I have in here have all the normal channels, or all the, the standard channels, not to be confused with the normal channel. So normal height, color, ambient occlusion, roughness. They also have an opacity. So if you add images, whoops with an opacity. Let's see what happens. So I click import. What it's done is it's now defaulted to the mask. So no longer to the base color, it's defaulted to that opacity image. And what it's also done is it's added a mask in here. And this mask is also going to be part of the multi painting. And that's going to let you basically decal paint onto your model. So let me demonstrate that. When you have the mask selected as the primary channel and you paint, you'll see something different that happens. It automatically switches to the mask and then you paint in the mask view like this. And when you come back out, it's going to apply those other channels. So we can play around with these multipliers to make it look a bit nicer. So I'm going to bring that up from the color. Maybe that one as well. And as you can see, it looks kind of crappy at the moment because I've probably got the wrong resolution, but what it's done is it's used that opacity to actually project that decal onto the model. So as you can imagine, that's super powerful because you can then basically paint any decal as long as you have this opacity image. So this will be really helpful for these kinds of dirt decals, but also other decals where you're painting on something like a screw or whatever it is using just these PBR textures. By the way, I will point out this opacity, it was automatically detected as a mask. And it did that, if we go under preferences, it did that because the texture tags in here are set up so that if we scroll down the bottom, opacity, it will find anything with the word opacity in it and it will put that in as a mask. You can change this if you have a different convention or a different tag that you want to use to identify these opacity images, but this is going to be the setup by default. All right, so before I move on to the last thing that I wanted to showcase, I will just point out, I mentioned at the start of the video, you can change this type to constant. And I want to point out exactly when you might use something like that. Imagine you have a material underneath that has a metallic of one. Like this. So it's a metal. If you just leave this as it is, the metal is going to pick up whatever the metal is underneath because that's how this layering system works. So in PBR Painter, when you paint on only these channels, it doesn't cover up the other channels that you don't turn on. So this is where you would turn on metal, change this to constant. And what that does, as you can see, is it's now, if I just get rid of this 
texture for a second. It's now correctly setting a metallic of zero for the areas that I've painted. And we can see that by adjusting the multiplier, or we can see that by changing the opacity. So when we have the metallic opacity to zero, it's metallic, but it shouldn't be. So we put that up to one. And that's all you need to do to handle those situations where you need that constant value. If you want to get rid of your painted areas, you can use the normal arrays alpha approach. When you do that, as you can see, it automatically gets rid of the brush, brush texture because you don't typically need that when you're erasing. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to hold control shift and click. And again, it's going to go to the mask view. And now I'm just going to rub out the areas that I don't want and then letting go. It's now removed all of those different channels based on these images in here. You can also blur or soften and smear using the exact same setup. So again, we can do this, or we can smear this. And it's actually smeared every single channel. So if we look again in here, you can see that it's smeared the color, the roughness, the normals like that. And of course you can add a layer bump if you want. And what this is going to do is it's going to actually bump up the areas that you painted. So that adds a nice effect because if you're painting on a decal like this, you will probably often want it to be bumped up like that. And then as per normal, you can control this, this bumping like that as well. So you can really see that it really has actually smeared those normals across. So that could be a nice effect if that's something that you're going for. So I think you'll all have a lot of fun playing around with this tool. And as I said, this is something that you just can't do in Blender. It's not like the add-on is just making things more efficient. You actually can't do this kind of painting. So this is a huge step up from the previous version. Okay, so now I'm gonna get rid of this layer again. And I'm gonna take away that metallic. And I'm gonna showcase another example where you might wanna use this multi-painting. And this is to cover up the seams in your UV mapped materials. So to do this, I'm going to add for a start, a standard layer. And this is going to be my base material. So I'm going to again use the multi import. And for this, I'm going to grab a fabric material, which looks like this. And this is going to be my base material. So as you can see, it looks quite nice, but we have this big seam down the middle. And this is often a situation that you'll face. And we can actually use the multi painting to cover up this seam. So to do that, I'm going to add another layer and this is going to be a multi-paint layer. So the multi-paint is actually going to sit on top of this one under here. And for this one, I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I'm going to grab these same images. And when I do that again, I've got the same setup ready to paint straight away. I might just before I do anything, just create a folder. And this is going to let me basically take these two layers and put them into the same folder like this just to remind you all of this new feature as well. Okay, so before I paint anything, I'm gonna make this roughly the same scale as the underlying image. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line that one up and I'm gonna basically paint across the seams using a stitch to kind of cover them up. So just painting the color like that for a start. And as you can see, what it's done is it's now added all that over that seam. So for a start, it doesn't look particularly good because I need to actually clean up the edges. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically paint a few of these and then I'm going to go through it later and actually make that look a bit nicer. So I might just speed up the video while I do this. Okay, so I've painted over the main parts of the seam like that. Now what I want to do is actually make that look a bit nicer. So it looks fairly good at the moment, but there's obviously some discontinu discontinuities in here, things that need some cleaning up. So I'm going to go across to the arrays and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mask and just add a new texture in here. And then I'm going to make this one random and clouds. And this is basically going to make this cloud effect mask my arrays alpha. And I'm going to go control shift F and just take the strength down a bit. And then I'm just going to go again, control shift, and then I'm going to clean that up a bit along the edges like this. And that's basically just to make that original one blend into this one here. And in these regions in here, I'm going to basically put the strength back up, get rid of this mask 
and I'm actually going to erase what I've painted all the way down in here. And that's going to let me basically bring this stitch in to meet up with the one in the middle. And again on this side, and again getting rid of these bits. Now you may want to spend more time on this, I'm going to be fairly quick. But as you can see, you get the idea. Now it looks like basically it's joined up those two parts with this nice stitch along the middle. So you could clean up this as well, it actually looks pretty good. And you may want to play around with basically going back and forth with this process. By the way, you'll notice when I went back to paint, it automatically brought the texture back, which is another part of the, the painting just to make things a bit more efficient. You also may want to basically move this around so that you're not always painting with the same one. So again, I'm going to drop the strength and put this up and just kind of blend these a bit, just to kind of make it a bit, look a little, little bit more realistic. If you want to be a bit more critical, sometimes it helps to actually go across to the single channel and look at, say, the normals and just make sure they look all right which in this case I'm actually pretty happy with that. So this is the bit that I just painted. It actually looks like it's a random little streak of a crease across that, so that's okay. These bits look fine, and I could do the same thing over here so I can go across and erase. And I'm just going to go back to the material view. And again, just erase this like this. And I think I'll leave that as it is rather than spending too much time on that bit. And maybe just clean up some bits on the back here. And I've just changed the scale of that brush mask because it was a bit too small. It was making these kind of tiny little bumps. And I might just actually skip the video till the end of this and then I'll show you the final result. Okay, I've done as much as I can be bothered doing for the sake of the video. So I'm going to leave it there. This is how it looks. So as you can see, pretty much covered up that seam down the middle with a stitch. So now we can kind of get away with this looking like it's a seamless material. So let's have a look at how that looks in cycles. So it looks pretty nice. One more thing before I wrap up, you may find when you're doing this painting, there may be a very slight delay when you first start the painting, which, which may be in the order of, of something like a tenth or a fifth of a second. So it doesn't sound like much, but you may notice that initially there's just a very minimal delay. I am looking at ways to improve that. It seems to be related to how Blender applies the painting. For now, I just recommend when you first start each of your strokes, just hold it still for a split second until it does that first paint, and then you can move smoothly after that. Before I finish up, just want to show you all another example. This is this exact same process, but using that rock material that I was working with at the start. And this is what it looks like when you're using displacement and you apply that displacement in cycles and you paint across those seams. As you can see, they're perfectly hidden, look so much better than the original and absolute game changer because you cannot do this in Blender at the moment. Anyway, that's it for me. The only thing left now is for you guys to go out and try it. Super excited to hear how you go. Please let me know what you think, give me your feedback, and most importantly, please share your work. It is so amazing to see what everyone does with the add-on, so please keep sharing that awesome work. All right, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in another video. Cheers.